Hallelujah. So quickly tonight, I'll be speaking what I tie to the Lord is with his people. Because there are times that just want to hold on to the last bits that is available. How many of us have gotten to times in our lives that we just want to hold to something to read Psalm 73 verse 1 2. Truly, God is to Israel such as are pure in heart. As for me, after that man made that declaration of faith, God is good to Israel. Then he got to this point, said, But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had almost slipped. Stumbling is a possibility. And you know, in life, we take turns, we our blind side sometimes gets the best of us. We don't see things in, in the full glare. Stumbling is a possibility. So when you hear that the Lord is with us, it's a great declaration of faith. Because people stumble. And it's not only the weak that stumble. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. It was the song of Hannah. It's not only the weak that stumble. Says, talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Verse 4. The bones of the mighty men are broken, and those who stumbled are guarded with strength. Normally, those who have strength do not stumble. He said they are even guarded with strength, yet they stumbled. Stumbling is a possibility with men. I see in the Garden of Gethsemane, and because those times could be season of great stress and distress, there are times that we come to seasons of great stress and distress. And Jesus got to it in the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible said that Jesus became sorrowful and deeply distressed. And it was for purpose. There are times in our lives that are called seasons of stress and distress. Jesus came to it in the garden. The Bible says that Jesus was really sorrowful and greatly distressed. He was not just sorrowful a bit. He said he was great. The distress was very great. There are seasons like that. Seasons that like, a lot of things cause people to stumble. But for us, I pray that in the name of Jesus, we shall not stumble in the name of Jesus. And why? Because the Lord is with us. Say, the Lord is with us. Doesn't matter how great the distress is. The Lord is with us. Psalm 46 verse 1 to 7. The Lord is with us. Tonight, I've just come to give you a charge. I've just come to charge you up. And to remind you that the Lord is with his people. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. If ever you find a human being that, that comes to your rescue at every point in your trouble, when you don't have money, you can call on this person. When you are in the position, you can call on this person. When FRSC holds you, you can call on this person. When your children need somebody to speak to, oh, you can talk to this person. Then that person is a great man. As the, see the description of the Lord. The Bible says that it's a very present help in trouble. Anybody that can stay with you through trouble is a great person. And the Bible was speaking, and there is no man. The Bible said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Verse 2. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, I see, as I was, the heading of this, um, this psalm was, the Bible wrote that it was written by the sons of Korah. And if you know them, there are people that the ground opened up and swallowed. So if they are telling you that, though the earth be removed, know that they know what they are saying. Though its waters roar and are troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Verse 4. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Go to verse 5. We are going to verse 7. God is in the midst of her. 
she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Verse 6. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. Verse 7. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. So if you read that scripture, the question you will ask is how can the earth be removed? How can kingdoms and nations be shaken? And yet, there is a place that is not shaken. How can there be earthquake in places, in a particular location, and there is a particular house that is not moved? And the Bible says, there, it says, God is in the midst of her, therefore she shall not move. Say, the Lord is with me. I shall not be moved. Because moving is a possibility. Stumbling is a possibility. It doesn't matter how much strength you think you have gathered. It is a possibility except the Lord is with you. And truly the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. That's Chronicles 17, 1 to 2. The Lord is with us. I don't want to show us some implications of when the Lord... I want you to be able to extray your life and see if you have come to this point to boldly say that the Lord is with me. Now it came to pass when David was dwelling in his house that Nathan said, David said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under tent curtains. Verse 2. Then Nathan said, Do all that is in your heart for God is with you. When God is with a man, you can do all that is in your heart. Nathan did not need to probe for that to what David wanted to say. You can go and do it. Why? Because God is with you. When God is with a man, there is an express room to do all that is within your heart. The only person that could restrain David was God. At that point, and the reason was because Nathan said, do all that is within you, for God is with you. Amen. Second Chronicles 20, 17. Implications of when the Lord is with the man. Second Chronicles 20, 17. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is is with you say the lord is with me and the, the reason they told these people to go out and fight was only one thing they said the lord is with you. when the lord is with a man there is no fear first chronicles 22 17 to 18 quickly run through all the scriptures first chronicles 22 17 to 18 david also commanded all the leaders of israel to help solomon his son saying is not the Lord your God with you? And has he not given you rest on every side? For he has given the inhabitants of the land into my hand, and the Lord is and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. You have rest when the Lord is with you. And if you remember the story of Jesus, the Bible was speaking about when Jesus was traveling, when there was a great turmoil on the sea. And the Bible said that his disciples took him along. Mark chapter 4. Verse 35, let's read it. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. I want you to come to the resolve again and to come to the remembrance again that the Lord is with you. Mark 4, 35. Thirty-nine. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat. As who did they take along? They took Jesus along with them. And the Bible says, and the other little boats were also with him. So they were not going with anybody else on that journey. They were going with Jesus. The Bible said, they took him along with him. And at the end of that story, we all know it, there was a great storm and there was a great calm by the word of Jesus. So when the Lord is with a man, there's always a great calm. But you know that sometimes debates could arise about whether or not God is with us. Could arise. You see, for instance, in Nigeria now, 
you can decide, you can, you can, after thinking of many things, conclude that the Lord is with you, but say that the Lord is not with this nation. Yes, you can see? It's like the angel that is watching over this nation has been sent on an error. You can decide to say it. Because you will look through everything. You will agree that in your life there has been a movement. But you say that there's a particular place that the Lord is not with. Debates arise whether the, the Lord is with people or not. You can look into your life at the point and say, is, is the, have you, maybe this week, so maybe I've even looked and say, am I sure that God is even interested in this thing? You are okay. okay. God is interested in my spiritual life. But these other things, I'm not sure. It's like God is dealing with me. And you're not the only person. Let me show you somebody. God is chapter 6. That's 11. George 6, verse 11. That's Gideon. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebin tree, which was in opera, which belonged to Joash the Abbey's right, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the midnight. And if you read it from before, from the first verse, you see that they were troubling the nation. So this guy went to do something else in the wine press. Normally, wine press is meant for wine, but he went to trash me so that they will not come and steal it from them. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, the Lord is with you. Just as I'm telling you now. He said, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Verse 13. Gideon said to him, oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, there could come a point in your journey that after extraying your life, you come to a point and ask the question, if truly the Lord, if the Lord is with me, debates arise whether or not the Lord is with us. Why then has all this happened to us? Where are the miracles which our father told us, saying, did not the Lord bring us from Egypt, but now the Lord has forsaken us, delivered us into the hands of the Midianites? Then the Lord turned to him, Go in this mind of yours, save Israel, and by no sense. The debate arose for Gideon about whether or not the Lord was with him. Despite the fact that the angel first told him, he was not the one that initiated the conversation. The angel told him the Lord, and he said, if the Lord is with us, debates could arise. Maybe debates that have, have arisen in your heart as to whether the Lord is truly with you. I've come to tell you this evening and give you an, a full assurance that the Lord is with you. The Lord has not. He said, do you know the number of times that the Bible spoke about Jesus saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because God knows that in our journey, there will be times that it seems as if we are forsaken. He said, even if your father and your those are the best people that you could run to, even if they forsake you, the Lord is saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord is with you. So which one, where are you among those two sinners? Are you sure that the Lord is with you? Or you are still doubting? You are still dividing your life into four places. I say, God is in one over four. But I'm not sure about three over four. But you see, in this house, I've come to understand that the Lord is truly with us. The Lord is truly. You see, there is no one that makes progress in a nation as hard as ours. If the Lord with peace, if the Lord is not with them, the Lord is with faithful as same. See, I was looking through our lives and I saw that God has kept us. God has delivered us from destruction. God has answered our prayer. How many of us have prayed at the beginning of this year and you are seeing answers? God is with you. Those are evidence that the Lord is with you. Do not ever allow the level the devil deceive you that the Lord is not with you. Evidence that the Lord is with you. He has saved us. Um, yesterday, I was, I think, maybe last week or this week, I was listening to some of the messages that pastor preached at the beginning of the year. And I was hearing some of the words that I was speaking. So I, yesterday, I, I was looking at his face. I felt his face was um, a bit dull. So I now said, you remember this word that you said? I said, ah, no. I said, because when I heard it, I said, ah, ah. This thing is true. It was there were so many prophecies spoken at the beginning that we despise. Many years we despise it. It shows that the Lord is with us. 
I don't want you to allow the devil take your joy. I don't want you to allow the things you see in the country take your joy. The Lord is with you. So many answered miracles. So many helps that we have received from the Lord. So many. It's chapter 4 verse 7. This evening, I said, I've just come to charge you up. I don't want you to forget. Because there's a tendency in us to forget. You can forget. It's around chapter 4 verse. It says, For what great nation is there that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? For whatever reason we may call upon him. Say whatever reason. There are some people that have gods and they are there are questions they cannot ask their God. There are prayers that they cannot pray to their God. You remember when the prophets of Baal, they were praying, they were, they were telling themselves, the God could not answer because the God could not do it. But the Bible says, it says for whatever reason, you can even be itching your body and talk to God. That's how Christian, what great nation is there that has God so near it? The things you cannot tell your father, the things you cannot tell your friend, you can tell it to God because the Lord is so near. Don't ever forget. The Lord is so near that for whatever reason we may call upon him. One of the things that this word does to us is that it gives up us again to ask again. For whatever reason we may call upon him. It doesn't matter the reason. You might have asked yesterday. You can ask again. Because we have God so near. So near. I say all this is just because the Lord is with us. Just because the Lord is with us. On Sunday, pastor was speaking about forbearance of God. Let's read Psalm 18 verse 35 to 36. The forbearance of God. Ah, you see, there are things, and he said, he said, there are things that people have done that we have also done. And yet, we have not even got the same judgment that they got. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me, so my feet did not sleep. It is the Lord that has made us not to sleep. Don't ever forget. It is the Lord that has enlarged our path under us. If you keep walking a road without an enlargement, there's a tendency for you to sleep. But you say, your gentleness has made me great. Because of God's forbearance, we have been able to do, we have been able to advance. Some of us said no to God several times. God kept coming back to us in different ways. And now we are becoming like a mighty man because of the help of God, because of the mercy of God. The Lord truly is with you. Don't doubt it. The Lord is with you. Luke chapter 13, verse 1 to 6. The Lord is with you. There were some present at that season. Some who told him, but then Jesus, about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. So he had killed people. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered something? There are people that did the same things that we did. It might not even be that, greed, that grievous. Some people murmured and they were killed. Have you not murmured? I made that have you complained. Even today. Oh God. In your country will lele die. Even me. Even me. I just said it. I don't want to listen to news. As I'm listening, I'm abusing. Whoever is speaking, I don't want to know. Are you supporting the government or not? If you are supporting, I can't sue. I don't even know if in the middle of your sentence you now give a reason. I don't want to know. I, can't. I was just cancelling people today. Because if you are not speaking as per spare, and you are supporting the government. I saw one man today. I just came down. I saw that I was speaking to Queen's English. I listened. They said he's supporting God. Ah. We have no more though. We have complained. We have fought needless people. You just see somebody. The same thing that is doing that person, the same thing that is doing you. But you transfer your anger on them. It's even better if it's an adult. You transfer it to your children. Now I'm praying to God because children are resuming. Let our teachers be very gentle with them. 
People, <laughs> I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Verse 4. All those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them. Do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? The people that have died in this country, the people that bandits have carried, well, do you think that they are worse sinners? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Not speaking to them. Because of the forbearance and the mercies of God. I don't want you to forget the Lord is with you. These things you have gone through, it has only been the Lord. This moment you have mourned and the Lord has overlooked, it has been by the mercies of God. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. I know some of us, as I was preparing, so I just remember that some people have challenged authority too. I was reading about the Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. They challenged Moses' authority. Some people have challenged authority. Some of us have challenged authority, even spiritual authority. So what are they saying? No uh, long graduates. How many years? No one. The ground opened. And you see, God is truly merciful to us. The Lord is with us. And we are the representation of the faithfulness of God. We are when, when men see us like this, we are the physical representation of the faithfulness of God. Because God has said in his word concerning us, and God has fulfilled it concerning us. So when we look at it, when you wake up in the morning and look at yourself, one of the things you should remind yourself is that you are the physical representation of the faithfulness of God. God has been faithful to you through the thick and the thin, through the through the times that no man could even hear through the things that you could not tell any man through the processes of your journey the Lord has been faithful to you the Lord has been with you the Lord is with you don't forget you have had investments of the presence of God see this I was last week or last two weeks I think last two weeks or last week I was going out I wanted to I think I was going to the market or something so around this Ashi road at the end of the road, corner, I think they call it corner. So there's a guy that does PO, a man that does POS. So as I was going, I just saw POS sign, but I parked. And I came down, I checked how I parked. I said, okay, it was good. I was not on the road. And so I went to the man, I did the transaction and left. I entered my, in fact, I wanted to enter. I first saw a truck coming. So I stood, I stood back. I allowed the truck pass. So as soon as the truck passed, I just entered my car, closed it. And as I was about, I think I was even sitting there maybe to count the cash or as I was about to start, I just saw the car shaking. The car was shaking. I did not, in fact, it was sudden. I didn't know what happened. I just saw that a guy driving a bus had, the way he, he was bashed the car. And he was just driving. People were just screaming. People ran. I could not. When the thing happened, I just came out. I was like, I was still shaking. Because I was shaking inside the car. Not that I wanted to shake. The car was shaking. I came down. The guy couldn't, the guy, he was even driving away. I think people shouted at him. He parked. He now came, he was now double. Ah, please, ma. I was like, were you sleeping? Is it, what happened? So, when I now came back, and I now thought, look, in fact, people that were there were telling me that, thank God you entered the car immediately. Because it was just like a second as I entered the car and sat down. I had not even started the car. When the, in fact, the, I thought the neck of the uh, mirror was broken. The mirror actually broke. I, I just said, that was God. At the split of a second, that was God. The Lord is with us. There are people that the same thing happened, the same scenario, and that was the end. Their legs were broken. You have had great deliverances. Great deliverances in ways that you cannot. Un there are some, these are the ones that we see. What are out of some that we do not see? The mercies of the Lord upon us are so great. The Lord is with us. What nation has the Lord? So near to them. We have the Lord so near to us. So near that even in our thoughts, He can understand. 
You don't need to be screaming every time. There are times you need to shout. But even in your thoughts, the Lord is with you. See that split second? That was just a split second. It was just a split second. I don't know how else to explain it. Just a split second. You have had investments of the presence of God. Don't ever forget. Don't let the devil take it away from you. Investment of the presence and the help of God. Psalm 106, verse 1 to 4. Verse 1 and 4. Psalm 106, verse 1 and 4. Praise the Lord. All give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Verse 4. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have towards your people. Oh, visit me with your salvation. I'm particular about that verse 1, where we have been enjoined to praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy, and say his mercy endures forever. We must cultivate the habit and the lifestyle of giving praises to God. Because the Lord is with us. He's so near. The Lord is so near to us. He's with us. He keeps even the people that you cannot see. Even the family, you just say a prayer to God. I showed you where, he said, where, where the Bible was saying that, that for any reason, for whatever reason we may call on him, you can pray for him for someone that is in Antarctica. He hears and he answers. That is the kind of the Lord that we serve. And because he's with us, he's with us. And the way God turns things around in our life, God, the way God turns mistakes around in our life, shows that the Lord is On Sunday, pastor was preaching about David and Bathsheba. You know that Bathsheba should have been the person that brought the great, it was fact, it was the greatest spot and stain in the life of David. But yet, she was the person that brought the son that reigned after David. The same person had those two different issues in her life and God came through because the Lord is with her. When the Lord speaks a word, he defends that word. Investments of the Lord are very huge upon our lives. And I don't want us to forget. I don't want to check the position. Check your position. Check your thoughts. Who told you that the Lord is not with you? What is convincing you that the Lord is not with you? What is that thing that wants to take this truth from your heart? Your fathers all through scripture. Their testimony was that the Lord is with them. Look through your life. What is that thing that is challenging that truth? Don't allow it. Don't give the devil room. Because the devil bombards us with issues and keeps allowing us to go over and over. And even in our mind, sometimes we don't even see the issues. But it keeps turning over in our mind. What if? What if? What if? Don't allow it. Because he wants to take praise out of your mouth. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with his people. God is with his people. I know um, one of the things that would happen is people could, you know, even man's presence, if you have somebody with you, it's a, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. There are some people that got married to some people, not because they really liked the person, but because they didn't want to be alone. Being alone is an issue. They didn't want to be alone. Presence. People search for presence. Just anybody. Just come and stay with you. Remember Paul, um, Saul? How he did for Paul? Just come and stay with me. Just allow these people to see you with me. And the presence of God makes up for both human and divine need. Exodus chapter 33 verse 12 to 14. The presence of God no matter the human need. God even sends men to men. The presence of God makes up for both human and the vices. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you said to me, bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Verse 13. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Moses wanted somebody that could go with him. And this was what God told him. God said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. If there's ever a lack in your life, 
I want to remind you and tell you that when the Lord is with you, He makes up for every need. It makes up for every need. It doesn't matter how hollow or how deep it has been. The presence of the Lord makes it up. Makes up for every need. So we must get to that own place of undeniable resolution that God is with us. We must get to that point that I know that my God is with me. I know that my Lord is with me. It doesn't happen. It, see what Psalm 46 says? Even though the nations be removed, Nations can be removed, kingdoms can shake, but he said there is a people that who makes glad the streams of God, his holy tabernacle. Those people, God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. Nations can shake, but there are people, there's a set of people, the tabernacle of the Lord, that cannot be moved. Why? Because God is in the midst of them. Yesterday I was listening to uh, and so we're listening to Bishop Waleoke, and he gave one testimony. So after that, after I listened to it, I was now wondering, had there come a point in time where you can doubt that God is with him? I thought about it. And let me give you the testimony on his behalf. So he said many years ago, before the I think when we were, were looking for a property to buy. And so he said he was just thinking, was just wondering, he wanted to buy the property and blah, blah, blah. And so a man came and the man told him that, why not? He said there was a hatchery. Where they were now, it was a hatchery before. And they had divided the plus. They wanted to sell the place. And he didn't know. So he now said the man just came to him and told him that, why not go and check that place that they are selling it? I said, okay. That he asked the man for his name. Okay, give me your name. He said he asked the man like three times. The man did not give him the name. I said, okay, can you just give me your business card? Let me, let me know. So that when it happened, he was hoping that, he said he thought that the man was a realtor, a real estate agent. So that when he goes, he might be able, maybe he will broker the deal for them and all that. So he told the man, please, just give me your business card. And the man looked at him and said, I will see you. So he went and the man left. He said, he got the property. That's where they are. He said that since that time, he has been making announcements. This man, where are you? Are we? And he has not seen that man again. An angel. An angel. I said, I will see you. No, I had no business card, no name. I said, ah, what is true? Do, do, how do you think that man will feel? God is with us, so. God is with us. You see, let me give you my testimony too. Last week, I traveled to Lagos. And so when I was coming, I, was, I wanted to go with the train. I already booked my train, whatever. So I was now meant to go to the park. But I, I finished on time. I was hurrying. I said, I quickly get to the park. So I saw, I took a bike. It was the first time I took a bike. I said, just take me. As it was taking me to the junction, I told me, ah, please, I can, I can help you quickly get to the place. Just take a bike. I said, no problem. I said, I can carry bike from that place to the train station. That was the agreement. I asked me for 4K. I mean, he did not even tell me the amount. I said, just go. So it was around, um, I know that I just wanted to beat time. So when we got, it just drops me in a place. And I said, ah, this is not train station. I said, ah, this is train station. I said, ah, this is not train station. <sighs> okay. So and I said, wait, though. I went to meet um, the people at the entrance. I said, okay, I'm going to Ibadan. Where is this? They said, ah, we don't even know the place. Ah. That's me. I said, ah, okay, I, I, I took, it took me back to where the Okada people are. So, and how some people, they were still arguing. If they were speaking their language. Inachi, inachi. I said, ah, time is going, you people. I've already booked. If I miss this train, coming to Ibadan will be tough. It's an evening, evening train. So we were just talking. Suddenly, a man drove, drove in. I mean, he, he rode his back, his bike there. And he just said, I will carry you. I said, carry me. And all, he was still arguing. He, he was not Hausa, but he could speak Hausa. So we were just talking to him. I said, I will carry you to the train station. I was not even sure of the man. 
So they were not telling me that. Now nah, I'm man who has every time me. Follow the guy. You know that. If not for that man, because as I entered the train station like this, they were already calling us. This man broke traffic rules. As in, he was a military. I did not know he was a military man. He was as he was driving. The police and the he was driving against one way. On in fact, we rode the bike on Third Mainland Bridge though. Soldiers were asking him to come. And we got to that train at the nick of time. I told him, I said, God used you to save me. Because there was no reason on earth why you would look at me and offer to carry me. And when I got there, at the nick of time, I would have missed it. And, and I said, that's angel. Sincerely speaking, you need to put the true word on your experiences. You need to put the true word on your experiences. There was, there was, you see those house people? Even the money they first collected from me, they were unwilling to even give me parts. And I don't even ask, but I know that if I ask, they will never. They will never. And that man took me. And he was breaking traffic just because of me. That he did not know. <laughs> I was, put the true name on your experiences. Be encouraged. The Lord is with you. For whatever reason you may call on him. Whatever. Isaiah 5, to 1 to 2. Isaiah 5, to 1 to 2. I need to tell you that all these are investments of God. Now, let me sing to my beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up cleared out the stone, planted it with the choicest vine, built a tower in its midst, made a wine press, so he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. This farmer did all these things and had an expectation. I've come to remind you that the investments of God's presence upon your life is because he had an expectation on you. Don't despise it. The Lord is with you. He has an expectation upon your life. Matthew 11 16 to 17. An expectation. It's an investment. Investment of mercy. Investment of presence. But to what shall I liken this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces calling to their companions. Verse 17. Saying we played the flute for you. You did not dance. We mourn to you. You did not lament. So when this man was playing the flute, the flute, it was not just because he was enjoying playing the flute. It was because he wanted a response. He wanted a dance. And she said, we played the flute for you. You did not dance. We mourn to you and you did not lament. There's an investment of God's presence upon your life because he has an expectation from you. He has an expectation of us. They are his people. John chapter 14, 7 to 9. An expectation. John chapter 14. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Verse 8. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. Verse 9. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long and you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Jesus had an expectation of Philip that if I have been with you this long, one of the things that should happen is that you should know me. The church of God must know her God. We must know our God. We must, we must, our, our faith must be strong in our God. He said, have I been with you this long and yet you have not known me? Have I been with you this long and yet? What are the things that trigger you and that suddenly make you forget that you are a Christian? 
and suddenly you just lose it. You just lose it. God has been with you for long. The Lord has been with you. The Lord is with you. Have I been with you so long that you have not known me? We must come to an undeniable resolution that the Lord is with us and that we know the Lord. Yet you have not known me. You must get to a place of full assurance. Full assurance that the Lord is with us. Full assurance. Full. It doesn't matter whether you are in this country or not. You can, show, you can say that the Lord is with me. I know my God. My God will fight for me. My God will stand. You know, people that take laws into their hands oftentimes do not know that they have somebody fighting for them. If you do not know that you have somebody for you, you will take laws into your hands. If you do not know that you have somebody that is waiting on you, that loves you, you can do anything. And love has curbed people. You know love has curbed. Love can curb people. Love can make people. There are some women that before they married, they were like, they were like fire. Even their friends would look at them and say, ah, I'm not married now. Who will, who will accommodate you? But when they see love, when they see love, love can curb you. We see some men, some men, they will wake up in the morning and bait their children. They would never have done it in their life. They never believed they could do it. It's love. Love can curb. We must get to a place of full assurance because you know that God is on your side, that the Lord is with you. When you know that the Lord is with you, there are some things you will not do. There are some steps you know, there are some lives you lifestyle you will not live. We must get to a place of full assurance that the Lord is with us. He said, Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? Have I been with you? How long have you been hearing these words of God? How long? Get to a place of full assurance because truly the Lord is with you. Say amen. Mark chapter 9, verse 17. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. Go on. And wherever he seizes him, from here, and wherever he seizes him, he throws him down, he foams at the mouth, gnashes its teeth, becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered and said, he answered him and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. One of the expectations of Jesus was that all the while he was with his disciples, they must have been able to do miracles. They must have been able to cast out. So he said, oh, friend, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? One of the expectations of God upon our life for this investment of presence is that, that we may be able to do the things that he did and greater. John chapter 14 verse 12. That we may be able to do the things that he did and greater. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than this he will do because I go to my father. There are greater works locked up in us because the Lord is with us. Greater works. Great. You see, the time of Jesus was quite chaotic. Time of Jesus. There was a baby when they were killing, they asked that because of him they should be killing babies. Has it happened now? They should be killing babies. If I, any male, younger than I was wondering, so how would the people in that time, how would they be thinking? What would be on their minds? It was chaotic. The king, the angel told them, carry this child away. They took the child away. The king died. He said, bring this child back. They put him back. Because the Lord is with him. Chaotic times 
And yet, Jesus fulfilled his ministry. Jesus fulfilled it, even though it was chaotic, it was stressful. The Lord is with us that we may be able to do the works of the Father and to do greater works. To do greater works. Nothing could hold Jesus back. Nothing. Hebrews 13, verse 5 to 6. Why this investment presence? Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? I can't hear you say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The seven. Remember those who rule over. Okay, I think verse six was is the last place. Let's go back to verse six. In verse one, verse six. So we may boldly say, one of the things that God expects of us because He's with us is for us to speak and not speak in fear, to speak boldly. He says, I may boldly say, go back to verse 5. I may boldly say, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. What is the consequence of what he has said? That is verse 6. He said, so that we may boldly say, when you know that God is with you, then one of the things that happen is that you boldly speak. You boldly speak of these great things that you have seen. You are not part of those people who dampen everybody's spirits. You have words. In fact, when it comes to a point and you know that you are troubled, you pray. You can boldly speak. You can boldly cast your burdens upon the Lord because he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, I speak. The Lord is my helper. I shall not. What can man do to me? Our assurance must be clear and contagious. Must be clear and contagious. Now, I know that situations can make us dull. It is even serious. You see, when I, I and, and this word, I, I've had it in my head, I think from Sunday. I think I don't even know I was even going to, for sure. But that is the truth. And so when the issues of this week started happening, I felt that, okay, God was telling me, okay, you too, you must know that I'm with you. Uh, you must know that I'm with you. I want to assure you, I want to bring you to remembrance. Take time. Think about all the things that God has helped you through. Put a name on it. Testify. Some of us, we keep all these things to ourselves. Come out and testify. Encourage people. Boldly speak. Boldly speak of the things that God has done for you. What you are, you know that this is your testimony, eh? Some people prayed it for many years. Some people are still praying it. And you have it. Some people are praying to be married. Do you know that there are people that are praying to be married? I'm telling you, the people that are really praying to be married. I, I was, um, I read a conversation of a lady. And she was just giving herself over to different useless men. And all she was saying was that, I'm 30. I'm 31. She said, oh, it happened. The guy will be telling me I'm stupid. I'm useless. But I'm 32. And she, she's ready to continue with that relationship. She's not married, though. We must come to a place of foolish. That's my word. I told you this night is a charge. We must come to a place of full assurance. Come, put your name, put a tag on those things that God has done for you. Because the Lord is with you. Don't ask as if the Lord is not with you. No. no is, this, is this not you? Is this not you? The Lord is with you. So we may, may boldly say, Psalm 46, verse 1 to 7. That's where I started from. It 
Verse 6, verse 1 to 7. Verse 2, he said, Therefore we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling. This man was speaking about things that some of us, most of us have never even seen before. How many of you have seen mountains shake? Can you stand beside it? Other me that was in my car and he shook, I was shaking with it. And he said, no matter what happens upon the face of the earth, in verse 5, in verse 6, right, I says, the nations rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. There's a power of the Lord that no man can contend. Nations can rage. Waters can roar. They can be opening their mouth. But I tell you that according to the word of said, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. It doesn't matter what is moving. It doesn't matter the things that are happening. I've come to reassure you tonight that God is with you. You cannot be moved. The testimonies that God has given to you cannot be taken in the name of Jesus. The Lord is with you, church. Future Assembly has come to declare unto us that the Lord Lord is truly with us. The Lord is with us. We shall not fear. He says, so that I might boldly speak. I've calling you this night to boldly speak. To boldly speak. I want you to just bow your hearts. I see God has said, Jesus said that he will be with us till the end of the age. Jesus is not staying with us for a few minutes. The Bible says he's with us till the end of the age. I want you to first thank Jesus. Say, Jesus, I thank you for joining with me. I thank you for your mercies. I thank you for great assurances. I thank you for your help. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for your word that has kept me. Thank you because the nations rage, but you kept me. Thank you because you held my hand. Thank you because you joined with me. Thank you because you showed me your mercy. Thank you because you helped me. You joined with me. You held my hand. You gave me things that no man could give me. You put so you put stillness in my soul. You gave me great calm. Lord, I give you praise. I want to just thank Jesus. Just boldly speak of the Lord. Just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Boldly declare of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercies. Like your word, Holy Spirit, I 
love sitting at your feet. Mm. Holy Spirit, I love sitting at your feet. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I love sitting at your feet. Nothing else in this world changes me like your word, Holy Spirit. I love sitting. At your feet, oh, your word changes me. Your word, it changes me. Oh, your word changes me. Your word, yeah, it changes me. It is blessed my mind. Correcting my goals, healing my wounds, and making me whole. Your word, yeah, it's changed. It is blessing my mind. It is in my mind. Correcting my goals, healing my wounds, and making me whole. Your word. Just want you to fall in love with his presence. If it's with you, he wants you to recognize his presence. He is cleansing my mind, correcting, healing my wounds. What is he doing? Make me all your love. Let's go from verse 44. Psalm 46 from verse 5. From verse 5. Okay, maybe two verse 4. Let me see. Wait, be the two. I want you to get the content. Okay, so it was speaking in my mind. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake. With his swelling, describing what's happening on the face of the earth, said there is a river. This is God's antidote for that which is happening in the world. It's called what? A river. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. The swelling of the heart, there is a river. There must be something that counters it. It's not just an imagination. There is a river. And at the end of the Bible, the river is the Holy Spirit. It's the presence of God. What will give us stability in the midst of the swelling and troubling of the nations is a river. Ask your neighbor, how much of the river is flowing in you? I'm not hearing you. The way some of you are talking, like the fountains are dry. How much of the river is flowing in you? Say so there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. Holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Verse 5 now said, God, this is the consequence of the river. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. Who is God going to help her? Just at the break of the dawn, the six and seven, the nations read, the kingdoms were moved, uttered his voice, the earth melted, and verse seven said, The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob's heart. The God responds to it. Heart is shaking, there's a river. The heart is raging, the Lord is our refuge. Don't go alone. Don't go empty. Go with the river. Are you following me, church? Say there is a river. There is a river of God that flows through the city of God. This river keeps flowing 
forevermore and there is a river of joy that flows through the city of God I am still and I know that you are the Lord there is a river of comfort that flows through the city of God this river is flowing forevermore and there is a river of joy that flows through the city of God I am still and I know that you are the Lord I am still and I know that you are the Lord in Matthew 28 trying to lead us to pray we are not getting into the last words of Jesus Matthew 28 the last verse The last word of Jesus. Last verse. Said to us that we should go teaching them to us. Observe all things I have commanded. Oh, I am with you always. The last thing Jesus said as recorded by the writer of Matthew. Promise of his abiding presence. He didn't just leave action. He left us. I didn't send you alone. I like the way that Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. He himself has said, which me cannot be misquoted. Send that message relying on another person. Because I can say something and send mama and she will say it, and I will say, but that's not what I said. But when he himself, which means the issue of his presence, not even rely on a messenger to say it. He decided to hone it. It's so important to him. This principle of I am with you to the end of the age, Jesus was the bearer of his own message. He himself has said, which means occasionally if you doubt what your pastor is saying remember what he himself has said because there are moments we are trying to encourage you and you don't feel it but he himself has said i will never leave you no for a second that makes a whole lot of difference in our lives oh Go to the book of First Timothy. Read one, read one, two verses. We pray, then I'll say something. We are true. First Timothy chapter one. Is it chapter one? No, sorry. First Timothy chapter four, verse fourteen. Do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership continue meditate on these things give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all verse 16 take it to yourself and to the doctrine continuing them for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you you can't you can't minister to the world from a depressed position if you can't save yourself you can't save those who hear you and many a times we want the world to believe that god is with them when we ourselves are so doubtful of that presence if you cannot allow this thing to overtake you and encompass you until it becomes an embodiment in you you cannot save yourself and what those that hear you are you following me church look at second timothy 1 verse 6 two things i want to say there second timothy 1 verse 6 if i think 
therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying of hands say stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying of hands go back to that first Timothy 4 verse 14 I want you to put these two scriptures in your mind stir up the gift of God where is the gift of God it's the gift of God in you do not neglect the gift that is where which was what by what an unsteered gift is the same we live the same experience like a gift a man that has no gift are you following the gift was given to you by prophecy the gift was given to you by the laying on of hands those are divine investments but what is going to make the gift ultimately find performance is not what God does it's what you do God has given the prophecy the eldership has laid the hands but you must tear up the gift see the reason why most of you don't know whether it's there it is, that means the gift can be you and is silent so when we say the Lord is with you some of you they silent many times the reason why that language of the lord is with you seems silent is not because it's not true it's because it's not steered are you following me there are so many christians who don't engage his presence and his presence will be with you and be dormant are you following me the same way is gifts can be given to you and it's in you by prophecy by laying on of hands and is dormant until it is steered are you following me so when you come here so because mama is very at the land is i know i know you see we didn't tell you so that you would just say i know we told you so that you can what steer extend to your feet this evening you're about to steer it up until every fiber of your consciousness knows that the Lord is with you. Raise your voice and begin to pray. That's one of the reasons why you pray in the Holy Ghost. Until the channels of your spirit open up. Until everything inside of you open up. Seal it up. Oh yes, seal it up. Seal it up. Don't neglect it. Don't neglect it. Don't neglect it. Don't don't shut it down. Aroshabo kaba. Ire malaba kaso karaba. You are the one who is standing by me like a mighty and terrible one. Your voice makes all the difference. You utter your voice, the heart melted. Father, I thank you for your abiding presence. Begin to thank him for his abiding presence. Talk to him that you are conscious that he's with you. Talk to him with such levels of consciousness. Don't neglect the gift. God said meditate on it. God said give yourself entirely to it. Release yourself entirely to it. Do as if everything you do depend on it. Oh God, I thank you for your mighty presence. I thank you for deposits laid in my heart. Seloboko Shaba. Ibadetu Shaba Kopadahara. Ramadobo Shekeriaba. Set it up, set up. It's in you. Have you not received here the Holy Ghost since you believe? Ahead, that is the deposit. Have you not received this prophetic word since you believe? Why are you then downcast? Lift up your voice. Let your souls or let it catch some fire. Let there be gladness upon your face. Share up the gift of God which is in you. That courage is not natural. It's a gift of God. You have walked in it before. Now don't let it fall. That 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 boldness was not natural. It was the gift of God. Arose. God has not given you the spirit of fear. He has given you the spirit of boldness. I want some boldness to come out of this auditorium. I want some courage.
I shall rise. I shall overcome by Kadara Bashara. God has not given me the spirit of fear. Serono Boshara. Makatonia. Ikopotaya. Sharobokoba. Iramalabashara. Makokodobokode. Ikopokorobogada. Sharama. Some of us are just careless with it. You have neglected it, that's why it's not speaking. Channels of my spirit. Open up. Second Timothy 1. Let's read from verse 5 to 7. Second Timothy 1 from verse 5 to 7. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith. Somebody say call to remembrance. I want, of you, I want some of you to call to remembrance the fashion of you that will face anything. When did you become so contained? When did you become so controlled? Now you are so rational and you think you are growing but something is stifling you. We need to call a remembrance. If you don't see who you have always been, then you can accept who the enemy is calling you. He said, I call to remembrance that Jenny said that is in you. It was first in your grandmother Luce. It was in your mother Eunice. I am persuaded it's in you. Someone said the gift of God. Is inside of me. Say I am not empty. Say I'm not ordinary. I'm said to make an impact. Say the gift of God. I'm not hearing you. Say the gift of God. It's in me. Say it with confidence. Say the gift of God. The power that can destroy every work of darkness is inside of me. It's genuine faith. It's inside of me. Give me verse six and seven. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love and understanding. Which means, this you can look at certain expressions and say, this is not what God gave me. So one of the things you are doing tonight is that you are shouting down every manifestation that is not traceable to the gift of God in you. And say in the name of Jesus, you lose your grave. And you are calling out every manifestation. God said, call out power. Call out love. Call out sound mind. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Call it out. You are not, you are not that angry person. You are not that depressed person. You are not that irritable person. Call it out. God has given me power, love, samba, shedobokosa, maraba yamba shekana, oriaba shakalaba, arama shakolaba, irobokora. The spirit that God has given to me is a spirit of power. Oh my God, power. I am not a victim. I have power. There's power manifested in my utterance, manifested in my family, power manifested in my prayer. There's power manifested in my gathering. Oh, Rabos, that's what God has given me. I have love, soundness of mind, Zerobo, Makaba, Makabo Kobakaya. Sharamo kopokede, irama la basado, arama ya kasaroma, irama kabo. I have power, power to trample upon snakes and scorpions. Every gathering, every utterance, every cause that is not that 
that is contrary to the will of God. Power. God has given you spirit of power and of love and of the sound man. In Jesus' name. How does your anger to you say, Why are you angry? You say, You know, it's September. Some of you have started giving an excuse to some attitudes now because it's what? He said, Ahuma Wale, that's why I'm angry. Why are you down, Ahuma Wale? Why are you this? Did you hear? They fell today. I bought 1,050 naira per liter. I bought 60,000. You couldn't feel a car. It can trouble you. Some of you say, Hey, 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 hey. Because somebody, somebody say, The body here. Say, What? The enemy is using this to bring out who we are not. We are shutting them down. Say, I have love. How many of you know that good Samaritan? It takes love to, to look at somebody else that is broken. When in this world that we are now, if you see somebody else distress, say, Go, go, you're no bit here. Go, go, you're no bit here. But God has given me the spirit of love. Share it up now. Oh, Rabbi Shada, I have the spirit of love. I have the spirit of power. I have sound mind. My mind is clear. By the word of the Lord. Rase, Nabasha, Rabo Kabasha, Ramakado Sharo Bakada, Sharamakabo Kadabakasha, Ramakato Ribakataya, Shakota Rabakato Sha, Ramakato Rabakashekara, Ramakato Rabakadeko Bakataro, Arimakata Rabaka. Engage his presence. Somebody engage his presence until peace comes to your heart. Engage his presence until the scripture rises in your spirit. Engage his presence until assurance is risen. Say the Baba Bayata, Baba Badiado Basote. Oh, all the gifts of God with me will stay with me. I'm not losing anything God has given me. I'm not losing my children. I'm not losing my wife. I'm not losing my husband. I'm not losing my investment. Everything God gave to me shall stay with me because the gifts of God are perfect and they are good. Arrivo Shalom and Kabokadaria. There's nothing that is impossible to me because I believe. Pray. Yes, there's breakthrough here. There's breakthrough in this atmosphere. Ramoko di basha, akaboko kite ramoko. The doors will open. The Lord will make a way where there is no way. Remo karabaya, the Lord kariba. The Lord will make a way. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Go to First Samuel twenty-eight. First Samuel twenty-eight. From verse three. Samuel died. Israel buried him. Saul had put out mediums and spiritists out of the land. The Philistines gathered together, came and encamped at Shunem. You see? Say spiritists. Now I watch a lot of things. Last night I was watching, I watched one traditional ruler somewhere in the southwest on YouTube. I just watch, I just he was describing his journey to that position that he was not interested but one day he followed his friend who told him let's go to Ife somewhere and he followed the man to Ife he was not he didn't know that friend it was when they got there the friend said I want to go and meet one Baba I need to check my life and when the Baba was not consulting for the friend instead of talking to the friend he turned around and started talking to this man Said, there's a crown over you. The man said, Which crown? Now, somewhere in my subconscious, I said, There's always a need for people to know things. When the man ran into troubles, he said, When that contest for that stool was I, he always remembered. And not that Baba, that unsolicited word. How many of you, even as a Christian, 
I've ever felt that sometimes you want to know what will even happen. Occasionally, some of you are so down, you, you, you don't want to go out, but you check the zodiac signs. I'm Libra, you. Someone, Layawan, you, Amanda. It is a quest to just know. The Bible told us that the Philistines gathered against Saul. And Saul was afraid. But I discovered that the, uh, the fear of Saul was not just what was physical. The fear of Saul was in his heart. It was not because the Philistines army had grown. The Bible says at the point, I want to get the Bible said, Saul said they should go and get a woman, a medium. Because sometimes, have you ever got into a place of pressure? You don't say, if I, if I know about the foreign, could I say, Shembel? Or somebody comes to you and says, hey, say all these things. So, we're not low, Shishapura. Because, and the reason is because you're under pressure. Say, find me a woman. I don't know why it's a woman. But that's why another way. Go to her and inquire of her. And his father, the servant said, Father, there's a woman in the middle. He means the servant all the time. So, no media, they said, Yes, sir. But they have where they go. And the, he said, Please conduct the science for me. Bring God one night. Name. You know the whole story. And the, and the woman said, You are saw. When he saw, he said, he said, What did you see? He said, I see an old man. He's rising. He said, Ah, that must be somewhere. I, I like that conversation. Just go to where. Yes, bring up Samuel for me. Continue. The woman saw Samuel. She cried out with a loud voice. The woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? For your soul. The king said, Do not be afraid. What do you see? The woman said, I saw a spirit ascending out of the earth. An old man, this, this. Continue. Now Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed by bringing me up? Saul said, I'm deeply distressed, for the Philistines make war against me. God has departed from me. The greatest battle is not what is against me. The greatest battle is what left me. God has departed from me and does not answer me anymore. The Lord will answer you. How many of you know that there are some times in life a dream can be an encouragement? It doesn't seem, you are facing that situation, but you, you woke up and you just saw that. I, they wake up in the morning. I cross that river. I don't know what it means, but I cross that river. And that, that becomes a momentum. The same way the enemy can use a dream to depress me. Say, the Lord has not answered me, neither by a prophet nor by dream. I've called you that you may reveal to me what I should do. Samuel said, Why do, do you ask me? Seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy. The Lord has done for himself as he spoke by me. The Lord has turned the kingdom out of your hand, given to your neighbor David. Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord, his fear so wrought upon Amalek. Therefore, the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you into the hand of his Philistine. Tomorrow, you and your sons will be with me. How many of you remember that when you meditate upon these things, you will not only save yourself, but what? Those who hear. How many of you know that the Bible told us, I think it was 1 Samuel 31 verse 4, the Bible said, and Saul died and his three sons and all his mighty men. That was give, give me the next verse. Yeah. Next verse. So Saul, his three sons, his armor bear, all his men died because there was something that it is what you have that you carry. The man was had already lost the battle. Everybody around him was contacting defeat. From his three sons to his armor bearer to all, to all his men. The Bible says when he had that, he just fell for that woman. And you know, they had to be begging him to eat. I'm saying that because I want to contrast it with something. 
In 1 Samuel chapter 30, David the anointed to face a distressing moment. The Bible says he got to Siglag and they taken his wife. They taken all his children. They taken the wife of his men. Everything they have gathered them be lost. And the Bible says he wept. Listen to me. That you are a great man, strong man. Does not mean if you get to the place of battle, you will not win. David wept. Jesus wept. Occasionally you will weep. But the Lord said, I am with you. You didn't hear what I'm saying. Said the Lord is with his people. David wept. The weeping was so deep. The Bible said he wept till he had no more strength to weep. It wasn't the type of it wasn't the one you comforted yourself. It's that if you even continue to sing your high tell you say of cuckoo your me. And the Bible says even his men spoke of stoning him. The people he has labored for, raised from nothing, they spoke to stone David. And David was so distressed. But the Bible said David took an effort between David and Saul is presence. Bring the effort. And David asked the Lord, shall I inquire, shall I pursue the truth? And he answered, the Lord will answer me. Say the Lord will answer me. What was the difference in David's life? The Lord answered. He said, tonight, I want you to bring, see sometimes, when mama was leading that teaching, she said, he uttered his voice the heart melted and I was meditating on it because when the Lord utters his voice sometimes you don't hear it but you just see that things have changed so sometimes he utters his voice not for us to hear but to change the situation but there are times he utters his voice and that is what changes everything immediately you hear his voice about something that situation and this, that was what he did for David. He answered him. The Lord will answer him. Open your voice and pray in the spirit. Pray like, pray until the Lord releases something into your inner man. Pray, 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 pray. You don't need a science. You don't need a medium. You don't, this is, I want you to activate the presence. The Lord is with his people. But every David must inquire of the Lord. Every Timothy must tear up the gift. Open that place of your distress to him. Open that place of your body and let there be an interaction until he responds. Until you feel a response. Until a response comes. Maraba, akaboke, maraba ke bakadu, kaboka ba, akeboku bekada, koshada, ekubaraba ke koshebade bakado ke bara, akabaye kade boku bakadia, shaba kaboke bakadi ko bakade kaba, kabaka doke bakai kaba kaboke robo kaba kadi akuba, akendo bakeda bakado ke bakai kaba, akubaka raba kaba kodi ke raba kaba kida boko di ke deko boka da, ekode bara bakida baka. Jaba da baka da raba kaba, eko de kere baka do ke baba, jaba de kere baka do baka raba, ora baka de kere baka da moshado, eko de eko bara eko da ko de ba, jaba ka do ke raba ke do ke da ba, o tani tara, tani tara, tani tara, jaku raba ka ba ke do ba ka, o bara raba ka se da ba, let not remember some tani tara, o raba 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 raba, o Lord, your hand. Is not short. Arema Shakoba, Oria Shakoba, Oria Nabakaya, Oria Nabakatoria, Arama Kadi Abosha, Irama. Oh Lord, turn it around, turn it around. Shere de de ba yeke de ba da, Shere de ba kere de ba kodi ba, Shere de kere kere ba le ba le ba, Irama la ba la ba la ba shara da la la ba. In Jesus' name we pray. When God speaks to you, men become less irritable. God told David, pursue, you overcome. 
when David was going, 400 of his men said they were not going. But 200 of his men said they were not going. It didn't become an issue. It was not an issue. God did not say, go with 600. God, God said this, pursue. When God said he would do something, when the people you think he will use say, we are not ready, you are not troubled, because God said he would do it. Because he was persuaded, God said it. He got into the field. He even saw a man lying on the field that was gasping for his life. He was still feeding the man. Because he didn't feel like, my, I'm wasting my time. He was actually pursuing where he, the people he doesn't even know where they turn to. But God gave him an opportunity to take care of a man. And that was the opportunity of his direction. But all he was hanging on. What made him easy for him to under that pressure to be a blessing to another person? God said. Are you following me? What made it easy for him to continue under that pressure when 200 of his men said they were not going? God said, open your mouth, Father. Let your word down on my spirit. Let your word down on my spirit. Over everything troubling my heart, let your word light upon my heart. Pray that prayer. That's one of the five prayers tonight. Let your word light upon my heart. Over my life, over my the rumblings of my spirit, the rumblings of my spirit. Let your word, oh God, I am not hopeless. I am, I belong. I'm not a Gentile that was hopeless and without God in this world. I walk in the common wealth of Israel. And there is hope to him that is joined to the living. Therefore, Lord, let hope rise in every place and every situation that I face tonight. Let hope rise let hope rise let it be clear that the lord is with his people let it be clear that the lord is with his church let it be clear that the lord has not turned his back on me let it be clear that the lord is standing by me like a strong and mighty warrior let it be clear that the lord is the god of his prophets we give you praise for the light of God, for the prophetic word upon our hearts, for the light upon our tabernacle, for direction in our confusion, for light in our darkness, for comfort in our distress, for hope in, in every challenging situation, for power and for might rising in our spirit. Thank you. Rabo Parabaka, Rabo Karibada. Thank you, Lord. Power and mind. Be unto the Lord. supernatural 
everywhere you have prayed where there is no reason to pray where there is no wisdom to pray your deliverance in that area is supernatural your answer will come supernatural you have called upon the lord in every situation where it looks like it is foolish to trust him the hand of the lord will be stretched oh for the hand of the lord is not short that he cannot save nor is ears heavy that he cannot hear whatever is standing in the way of answer prayers is cleared off by the blood of jesus is removed it's removed if there's any sin the enemy is latching upon to bring you into displeasure and to distress by the blood of Jesus we can it. Under this atmosphere of power, we restore power to you. We restore hope to you. We restore sound mind. We restore love. We restore strength. Receive strength. Receive strength. In the name of Jesus. Saul and all his men died. David and all his men recovered all because you will save yourself and then they hear you. This victory will manifest in every party. This spirit of hope, this spirit of grace will manifest in every situation. Receive answers. Marco Paradi Calabo that God will provide in a distressing economy that God will bring out waters out of the rock. Whatever state you are, I command the supply. Whatever it takes, I command the supply. I command the supply. I command the supply. I command the supply. Jehu stood that day and looked at Jezebel and said, Who is on the Lord's side? And two, three faces opened, jumped out of the window. The people that we didn't know that they have been waiting for God. Every secret messenger of your help, they begin to show face. I make that announcement. Who is on the Lord's side? Over your expectation, who is the Lord crying, waiting for? Their faces will begin to show. They will open their windows. They will open their windows. They will look out for you. They will do the will of the Lord in your life. Lift your hands and give God praise. Give Him glory. How am I belong to Him? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Say the Lord is with His people. How many of you feel the Lord is with you? The secret you are taking home tonight is that no, it is a steered gift that works. If you don't engage the presence, it will look like it is not there. But when you engage it, his wisdom will begin to flow. As you stand before the Lord, answers will come. In Jesus' name.